Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Dark Art Society podcast. I'm your host, Chet Czar, and today we have artist Steven Zapata. This is his second time on the podcast. I think it was around a year ago we had him on, had a really great conversation, but I wanted to have him on to talk about AI because he made a really great argument against AI uh, using AI for images. And um, I wanted to have him on because his video was so compelling. So we had a really great discussion about it. It's definitely something every artist needs to learn about and understand. Uh, there's a lot more to it than just this cool new app that makes cool images. <laughs> it's a it's a really interesting subject. And we had a great conversation about it. So very, very good episode. And uh, that's coming up. I have been, what have I been doing? I've been, I've been trying to get, um, stuff ready for my sales, holiday sales coming up, getting mystery boxes together, which are a big seller. So, um, I got a button maker, which is really cool. So I'm making some buttons, uh, making a few new items for the boxes and, uh, yeah, just doing that sort of thing along with the usual trying to just keep up on everything uh so yeah that's that's it just a lot of work a lot of work lately but you know that's how it always is here um oh if you want to um oh i know oh, where is it shit okay hold on yeah i just got an article an interview came out in the new issue of rue morgue magazine you can see right here if you're watching on youtube see there's my name down there it's uh what issue number 209 anyway it's got a really cool uh interview about the dystopia Oop, there it is with the hilarious pull quote i suffered so much during the process it was so painful no way would i have done it if I would have known how hard it would be, <laughs> it's it's a, a the story of how dystopia was created in the Kickstarter. And you you know you don't need to read that story, but it's a it's a great interview. Um, so uh, get that if you're interested. A uh, new edition of Rue Morgue magazine, and uh, yeah, so that can I think that's out. They sent me a copy. I'm not sure if it's out or not yet. Um, if you uh so yeah let's just there's not much more to talk about so um if you want to support there's no, no new subscribers but if you want to be a subscriber to the uh, dark art society patreon just go to patreon.com slash dark art society and you can join for as little as a dollar a month and you can join at the five dollar level and get a skull from the skull shop s-k-u-l-l-s-h-o-p-p-e dot com they make the best skulls Here's one now. Amazing. Anyway, if you join at the five dollar level on the Patreon every month, I do a drawing to for for somebody to win a, a free skull on the five dollar and above levels on the Patreon. Anyway, I think that's everything. I can't think of anything else. Let's get on with the interview with Steven Zapata. It's a really great one. All right. I hope you enjoy it. Here it goes. What's up, Steven? How are you doing? Check. I'm very well. Good to hear from you, man. How are you? Still uh, recovering from your show? Yeah, you recovering. Up, right? Yeah, recovering from the show and everything else and all the things that I was blowing off while I was doing the show. You know how that yeah. goes. Um but I'm getting back to normal. How about you? Good. You've been you've been live streaming. I don't know. I've seen you live streaming a little bit more lately, but maybe it's just because yeah. I've been online. I don't know on YouTube or something. No, no, it has been more than usual. I've been doing um three days a week now. Oh, these cool. Days. Yeah, yeah, it's been fun. I don't know. I I always like live streaming. I um I used to do it to an audience of like two people, like five years ago, mm. six years ago, stuff like that. So, um. 
I've always just liked the idea of it. It's a fun way to connect. Oh yeah. Um, but I've, I've gone off and on with it, you know, did it very regularly for a few years there would go off for a couple of years, but, um, it's a good time. It's always a lot of fun. So yeah, I've been doing it more lately. Did you notice a uh, chant more channel growth? I'm trying to grow my channel now. So I'm like looking for all the tips. Well, um, well, it, it always depends what kind of channel you are. Um, I feel that people really connect with the live streams. Mm -hmm. You know, I get a lot of people messaging me saying that they're great companions while they draw. They're happy to listen to them. Yeah. They that's use how them this podcast, sort of... I get that feedback yeah. from this podcast also. Yeah, I think that's like the main thing that artists are in the market for because we just have so much time to ingest media. So yeah, right. <laughs> pe pe people really like it. People really like it. Um, still, I still think most of the the raw numbers tend to come from a few videos that do well, which is mm. why YouTube has fed so much just clickbaitiness and things like right. that. But I do find that with um with volume, there, there's always just a couple that kind of like, for reasons I can't explain, because mm -hmm. there's so many others like them, just every now and then it'll pick a stream and it'll be like, you know, a few tens of thousands of people will watch this one. And then that will get, that will push some growth for sure. And people keep coming back, you know, they keep coming back because they know they're relatively regular. So that's cool. Well, yeah. one of, one of the, that's a perfect seg segue into what we're going to talk about today. It's because one of your <laughs> videos has become kind of popular. I think your AI argument against AI images video mm -hmm. or image AIs is it's, you've gotten a lot of uh, views on that. Don't is It's higher than average, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I've only got, um, I think it's probably got more views than any of my other ones, but it's absolutely above average. Sorry. I'm just putting my phone on. Do not disturb here. Oh, no problem. Okay. Yeah. It's very, it's, uh, it's timely. It's one of those things that came out, I think at the right time with, with really good information, you know? Yeah. I hope so. Um, yeah. and I, and yeah, so I wanted to give my, my take on it because, you know, I was admittedly one of those artists that was like, Oh, it's all cool. It's all good, man. You know, well, mm -hmm. you know, it's like it's technology. Everyone should use it, but yeah, or whatever. Just not really knowing a lot of the the stuff I learned from your video, which is why I really appreciate you making that video. Um, no problem. Because, because I could be of service. Yeah, I, I came out of it being like, oh, okay. <laughs> now I get why people are upset. You know, There's some stuff in there because yeah. <laughs> because you know, as as an artist, you or me personally. You, I don't want to be like reactionary. Mm -hmm. And I saw a lot of people kind of being reactionary, like, oh my God, it's going to take over everything without giving the, uh, all of the backstory and the background that you, and uh, that you were giving in this video. So I just thought it was yeah. like, you know, I go out of my way to not be like instantly reactionary. I try to be measured and, and, and like think things through before I make a, make a, uh, a comment about it online. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so, um, yeah, I was, I was kind of in that camp, all the, all the call outs you give, <laughs> you give in the video was basically me, you know, you're oh, like, no. yeah. Not I know, Not I know, no, no, I, I took it in the right spirit for sure. I, I, it was like, oh shit. Yeah. I kind of felt that way too. And I've had, um, I've had, I want to say two or three A R A I R. No, no, no. Just I think just one AI artist on the show, and mm -hmm. um, we didn't talk. She's awesome. We didn't talk about um, any of this stuff. So I figure you know we should talk about it. It's important sure. uh, that this aspect of it. So I don't know. That's that's where I'm coming from with it. So I don't know if you want to start talking about maybe how you first came to these conclusions about AI because you seem very well informed. I, that's the other thing with the video. It's so well thought out. It's like, damn, this dude is smart. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure it's indicative of me being smart. Uh, I think I'm uh, just a silly old artist like usual, but um, the, you know, it's really important stuff, it turns out. And I was, all right, well, let me rewind. So uh, I've had the AI image systems and AI here is a bit of a, a misnomer. We can think of them as machine learning programs, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, AI, AI is so broad and 
encapsulates so many things that are already actualized and things that people hope to achieve that maybe it's useful to be more precise and call them you know, something like machine learning, text to image programs, apps, whatever you want to call them. So the, the current news around them is really centered around a few tools that we've probably all heard of, like Stable Diffusion, Mid Journey. There's ones that are more semi-public now, like Imogen from Google and, and others. There's, there's, there's various others, but we've been leading up to this current moment for a while. And I've always been interested in art and technology and where they overlap. Mm -hmm. So I remember back in like 2015 was the first time I saw um, Dream by Wumbo, I, I believe it was. No, not, um. well, yeah, I think I think that is what it is. But it, um, no, 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 uh, I'm thinking of um, Google Deep Dream. That's what it is. Mm. Google's Deep Dream, which was uh, this program that uh, a research program that produced these very psychedelic like mushroom trip mm -hmm. looking yeah, yeah. images yeah. and it wasn't producing new images it was sort of interpreting images that already existed but i remember the first time that i saw deep dream uh i was a little spooked i was like huh there's a there's a lot of potential in there <laughs> and and the the words that they're using around this are very strange like it's interpreting images it's like oh well what does that mean exactly right um and then uh you know went out of the news came back in the news with each new development so we went through a period where the news around these things was based around uh gans generative adversarial networks were how they were training them so you would basically have one computer say, try to make an image and you'd have another computer try to prove it wasn't a human made image and they would sort of train each other. That's a huge simplification, which is definitely what we'll be dealing with here. Mm -hmm. But um, there was the GAN era and it, the GANs produced some, some stuff that was definitely newsworthy. I remember looking at them at work back in the day, uh, back when I was still in LA and being like, whoa, holy crap. And then I'd like call other people in Artist Alley over, like, look at this. And they'd be like, eh. you know, like, the, you know, it landed <laughs> differently with different people. Right. So we went, we went through, or they went through the GAN era and then uh, they developed reverse diffusion, which is the current like hottest technique. And that's what things like mid journey and stable diffusion are using. And the specifics there are pretty interesting, but uh, you know there will be new techniques. Is the way that I feel. They'll they'll come up with something new. Who knows if it'll be a complete rewrite, something from scratch, or if they'll build on reverse diffusion techniques going forward. But um, I've had these things on my radar for quite a while, being interested in the background research around them and the developments around them. But the current sort of very hot interest in them is what at this point, you know, we're talking in November. Um, it's like five months old. I mean, they right. really hit the news. They really hit the news. What back in, you might say July ish, something like that. Mm -hmm. That's when some like mainstream newspapers started writing uh, articles about them. And some of the big releases like Dolly mm -hmm. hit the news. I, I think Dolly really set off a, a firestorm around these things. So they've been around for longer than that. I've been aware of them for longer than that, but definitely five, mo five months old-ish is kind of the, the new paradigm for them. And I became interested because I had seen where they had come from. So the massive jump in quality to me was immediately like, what changed here mm -hmm. exactly like what 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 exactly produced that that sudden explosion in relevance and overall quality and that launched me down the rabbit hole so i started asking more questions that i didn't really weren't super my brain hadn't gone there before like right. when i used to when i used to see some of the explanatory videos where people would say oh, so the data goes in or this GAN or, or this model is trained on 100,000 data points, right? My brain just said data points, right? You know, I don't know. I didn't even have a thought. Right. I was just like, yeah, data. Mm -hmm. And if you asked me, I would have said that could be anything. That might be someone, a coder telling it like treat red this way or something like right. that. I don't know. And then when I started looking into it, I was like, oh no, data points are just 
pictures. They're just art, photos of people, photos of human beings. They're, they're just images. Mm -hmm. They're just images that, that they're being trained on. And that then led to new questions like, where do they get these images? What kind of images? How do they acquire the images? What is the systems around the acquisitions of the images? Once I started finding just a few things there that seemed weird, then I got really interested. And then I found other people who were really interested. Mm. So I I, uh, I hadn't been on Twitter in years at that point. So right now I'm talking like July, August mm -hmm. of this month. Um, once I started finding things, I was like, other people have to have found this. And I know where people get angry. So I was like, let's go to Twitter. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I like, I re I reopened my Twitter. I never use it. Right. Um, and I started poking around and I was right. There was more people who had caught on to something going on. Um, I found people like uh, Carla Ortiz and mm -hmm. RJ Palmer. They were I, making I started following her because of this issue. Yeah. yeah. She's, she's very, very well informed on it. Um, and, and she's been doing digging. She's very well connected. Mm -hmm. So she has people she can ask questions to and things like that. So, uh, I started digging through her info that she had posted as well, following new rabbit holes from that. And then I just started slowly piecing the things together, things that I collected from, you know, angry tweets from other people mm -hmm. and resource sharing and things that I had found on my own. And that produced the video. That wow. So that's, a, that's a brief history of how I got interested and how I wound up. Impressive. Here. Impressive. It's a, it's a lot of research. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, um, Carla was the first person who clued me into the fact that maybe there's some problems with this mm -hmm. on Twitter. And then I started following her and then I saw your video and I was like, oh shit. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. If we got to talk about this, we got to get him on the podcast. Um, yeah. I mean, so it's like, it, it, what's great about uh, your video as well is not only is it well thought out and, and, and very smart, but, but you have the background as a tech, a guy that's not anti-tech an, an artist who's not anti-tech. Yeah. So you kind of have like uh, an extra leg up on, on people that are just hating the technology and traditional artists, you know? I hope so. I hope so. so the, the, those people don't, I don't want to invalidate their argument, but I had hoped that it could maybe work better coming from me because yeah. I've been very interested in inv right. in advancements my whole life. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it, it, and from a tech standpoint, the technology is so amazing, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, set aside the, the issues that we're going to talk about. It's so, it's really incredible. And, and when I started seeing it, I messed with it once, uh, uh, stable diffusion i think the one whatever the one where you went to the uh, discord server mm -hmm. there was one where uh, you that might have that might have been mid journey mid journey, mid -journey i'm journey sorry you're right yeah. yeah mid journey and i was like oh i wonder if it'll it can uh kind of give me a variation of one of my paintings and i just kind of put like my name my painting's name see what it would come up with and then all the results sucked and i did it like five or ten times i was like okay this i'm not i don't know this is cool but i'm not that interested it just it's like you know, you know how it is. It's like, yeah, we are the AI, you know, that's what we do. <laughs> that's what's fun about it is coming up with the ideas and yeah. compose. It's like making the stuff is the fun part. So the idea that there's a tool that takes the fun part out isn't appealing to me as an artist, you know? Yeah. I think, I think we're probably going to align on a lot of those yeah, feelings yeah. where we're just like for us in particular, <laughs> right, right, like, right. The, the point is sitting there and making yeah, it. So that's it's the, not, that's the fun part. it's not for us. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I don't think right. the people who want to use these things a lot are really aligned with us in that. Right. Regard. Right. Yeah. However, I was thinking, you know, okay, I could see maybe generating ideas or creating some kind of reference of I don't know, something that, without having to go and photograph your own ref, reference, mm -hmm. like, oh, I need an owl facing this way and light hitting it from over mm -hmm. here or something like that. And just, yeah. you know, it could be useful in that way. Um, or to get ideas even for compositions, you know, weird compositions. That could be yeah. cool. Uh, yeah. But but it has it, a great, it has a great sort of Rorschach block quality right. in, the, in the simpler executions that I think we can all find a lot of appeal. Yeah. In that. It's just something to free associate. Huh? Right, right, right. Yeah. So it's another, it's a, it's a, I think a potentially great tool um, in, in that way. But 
However, um, <laughs> I think the, you know, the, However. <laughs> <laughs> the big main issue for me and i think probably for most artists is the idea that these programs are using and may, and you can explain this better than me but my understanding is these programs are using kind of like a uh a a a, a non-profit model to, in order to gain access to images for free by saying they're by kind of flying under the radar as like doing something for the public good or being a nonprofit when they're actually a for-profit company. Yeah. Basically this kind of loophole that allows them to just use everybody's artwork, anyone they want to train their AI without permission, which is totally fucked up. That's the thing that really yeah. pisses me off. That's so wrong. That's so like morally wrong. It's legally wrong. It's just wrong. Um, yeah. And I don't know how anybody using AI can defend that aspect of it. And it's so simple. It's like, take the, give people an out. That's all you got to do. Give artists an out to opt out. Yeah. Well, I, I would actually say, all right, so we, we can touch on a lot of things there, but uh, on the opt out quality, I actually think at this point, opt out is not enough. Yeah, I think it needs late. to be it needs to be opt in. You know, these models oh, need yeah. to be made yeah. opt in. Good point. Yeah. Good point. I, I yeah, that makes think... yeah, that makes way more sense. Now that you it's like it's so yeah. obvious that like, yeah, you should have to opt in if you're gonna, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the the crazy thing is like it once you hear these things, it strikes people like that. It's like, yes, yeah, it's, so, it's obvious. so obvious. Yes, yeah. of course it yep. should be that way, which it makes it all the more galling that it isn't, and that they went the worst possible direction <laughs> at every step. A tech what company went the worst possible direction. I can't imagine. No figure. <laughs> huh, you know, I'm I'm as surprised as anybody else. Wow. Um, yeah. To give a to give a brief overview for uh, people who haven't seen the video since it's you know 47 yeah. minutes long. I'll and, link you know, it. Everyone should watch it. I'll link it in the in the text. Thank you. Yeah. It, it's definitely the things are laid out there in the clearest yeah. sort of way possible. I think, but um, including it the the legal stuff the ethical stuff mm -hmm. and then just me as a person like ways that i could see this going that i think should summon concern for a lot of people um but to cover it briefly these companies in order to train these models require a huge amount of data points like we discussed before images in order to produce the quality that is getting them into the news lately. You can train them on less data, but it doesn't produce results mm. that are as good. So the the numbers we're talking about here are in the, on the low end, it's in the tens of millions. So there's a few wow. models that are sort of out there that it's like tens of millions. More, most of the models that people are paying attention to are trained in the hundreds of millions and something like stable diffusion, uh, it's hard to get exact numbers, but it's in the hundreds of millions to billions. So wow. one of the one of the data sets that they use, for example, is a data set called Lion, which is an acronym. I, I pronounce it Lion. It's L A I O N. Uh, Lion Five B. The Five B stands for five billion images. Um, that's where they're sourcing it from. It's more difficult to get a direct answer on, did they use all 5 billion? Are they using a subset of it? They're mixing it with other things, but extremely high numbers of data points is what they need to produce the high quality that they're looking for. And the only way to, well, no, I almost said the only way to get that much. No, the way they chose to get <laughs> that amount of images for now is to simply scrape everything off the internet carte blanche. So they are taking it from everywhere, from websites that aggregate images, people's personal websites, stuff that doesn't have anything to do with photography or art. So they're scraping stuff off of Pinterest, Shopify, real estate sites, just everything right now. So it's every kind of thing. And Imogen, for example, Google's upcoming text image AI, you can actually read their releases for Imogen and in bold text, they will tell you upright, we can't curate this data set. So just so you know, there's every awful thing in here. There's gore, racial wow. stereotypes. There's child sexual abuse symmetry. Like there's all oh sorts of stuff wow. in there. And um, the reason that they would be able to admit that and put that out there, and here's where we need to break down the they here, 
is that they, so let's say Google or actually Google's too big. Let's say the company that made stable diffusion, stability AI, they are not the ones collecting the images. They have funded a separate nonprofit, Lion, that data set that I mentioned before, which is its own company. And that company, Lion, using another nonprofit company called Common Crawl, right? And these are just exemplars. This The problem is that this system can be repeated over and mm -hmm. over and over again if we don't do something. Common Crawl scrapes the internet for these images, gives it to Lion, Lion bundles them uh, with the computing power paid for in part by Stability AI. And then after they bundled it, they hand it off to Stability AI. Stability AI goes, I made this and they turn it into a commercial product <laughs> that they then sell off to people for profit. Um, this, they believe this can be done because of, and we need to be very specific about this because people think they think they can do it for different reasons. But if you look at what they believe gives them the ability to do this, it's text and data mining exemptions that are available for nonprofits and for research institutions like universities that are doing this for research purposes. Mm. So the text and data mining exemptions, which here we can also take to include text, data, data includes images, right? Just stuff that's out there on right. the internet. Those exemptions are only for institutions that are doing this for those reasons. They seem to have detected that. And that is why they are not collecting things under their own name, but under these other, through these other programs, funding them because they know that's the way that it needs to be done if they want any hope of keeping this above board. Unfortunately, um, this is a new frontier, right? I mean, right. in the US, we don't have much in the way of specific proclamations about what can be done with this data and what kinds of products can be produced with it because, well, this is all cutting edge shit, right? I mean, this right. is all brand new. This is all out of nowhere. In the UK, we have probably at this point, the UK has the, uh, or the EU has, I believe, someone check me on that. I can't remember if it's the UK or the EU, but their text and data mining exemptions, uh, legal clause and writing is the most specific that we have. And if you read it, it lets you know that those companies can't do exactly what they're they're doing. They they can't do this if they're doing it has to be done for educational nonprofit research purposes. And they also cannot then, if they make something with it, they are not at liberty to extend that license to someone else. Actually, I want to be a little bit more specific about that. If you don't mind, yeah. Let me just read read a little moment here. Absolutely. Give me a second. No problem. Yeah, it's getting, uh, it's creepy. It's creepy when you it, start finding out. Because <laughs> like the, the idea that, like like you're saying, I had this, and, I, and it sounds like other people you've talked to have had this, aha, like, oh, obvious. This is the obvious. It's obvious. And if we thought that, they fucking thought that 10 years ago when they were designing this shit. You know, it's like, and they specifically so. went the other way, the, the more insidious kind of way. I would think so. So l let me just read. Okay. Um, let me let me just read this this little breakdown. So, uh, an exception for text and data analysis. I'm getting this from copyrightuser.org right now in the moment, but you can just go read the statutes uh, on official, you know, EU or UK pages if you'd like. But one, the computational analysis must be for the purpose of non-commercial research. Two. The copy is accompanied by sufficient acknowledgement, unless this is practically impossible. One of the things that's being done with this scraping is that there's obviously no acknowledgement unless it's useful for the the image to say, you know, this is a Greg Rakowski image right. or something like that. But they're they're scraping all of the licenses off of these things. People release art under Creative Commons licenses, or they say about their art, all rights reserved. This is my copyright, mm -hmm. things like that. This is removing all of that. So um, there's problems with that. And then let me read this. The provision further specifies that copyright is infringed if the copy made is transferred to another person or it is used for purposes different than those permitted by the exception. So 
purposes different than those permitted right. by, <laughs> by the exception would be commercial use purposes. And this is something that I believe needs to be hashed out in court, but it can certainly feel like you are transferring it to another person when you then produce this packaged AI model and then d distribute it for Absolutely. people to use. Yeah. So I think that, um, and, and again, I think it's very important to be specific that these are the reasons that these companies believe they can do this because the current atmosphere around the debate is getting really clouded by conversations that are not actually why a company like Stability thinks they can do this. So, it, you know, if you look at a lot of the arguments that are going on online, people are talking about fair use, like, oh, it's fair use, it's transformative, things like that. I understand that those are interesting discussions to be had, but I want to point out again, Stability AI doesn't care whether it's fair use or right. not. That's that's not what they are grounding their ability right. to do this on. They ground right. their ability to do this on the exceptions that I just read. That's what makes their business model work. There is an interesting fair use discussion to be had, mm -hmm. copyright discussion to be had, privacy discussion to be had. And I think all of those things will become relevant as time goes on. But if we're going to start at axiomatic assumptions first, ground floor first, it's the text and data mining exceptions that countries are not clear on, that there's no case law for, that we don't have a lot of standards for. Um, that is why they believe they can do this. I, when I read it and, you know, I just read some bits here, but you can go and read it. If you read this stuff, the more you actually read it, you're like, they can't do that. It's pretty clear <laughs> that you actually, can't, you actually can't do that. Um, so I, I think that that for me, that's where I'm most interested in focusing the debate and the discussion yeah. around these things. Um, it, it, it quickly becomes a very technical discussion. So I think it's one that's going to have to be taken up by professionals in, yeah, right. in, in law and things like that. But for me, that is the most important part. Yeah. It's yeah. And it's the most uh, offensive part as an artist, you know, the, the, just the idea that it's just like, a, a, I mean, it's, I don't know. It's just so, it's so wrong to do that without, um, it's just so immoral. It just pisses me off. You know, so you, you've been working for 20 years, creating artwork and sharing it with people for free online. And that's, and <laughs> that's the reward you get. The reward yeah. you, you get at the end is like, okay, we're going to take all of your art and use it to make this, yeah. you know, hey, I think that's going to like, you know, Take over as, your job, basically. <laughs> dude, as as far as I'm concerned, it's absurd. I mean, it's yeah. it's openly absurd. And there's, you know, I like you said, like yeah, you know, we share our our work for free, right? There's a, there's a lot of bad discussions going on out there about about why this is okay. Again, people are ignoring why the companies who are doing it think it's okay, right? right? They're adding in a right, bunch of stuff right. that is actually irrelevant. Yeah. But just to address that stuff, there's a lot of people saying, um, oh, well, it's okay to do this because you shared your work for yeah. free, yeah. which is, un an un as far as I'm concerned, an unbelievably bad faith argument yeah. because that is, there is no reasonable person is operating under the pretext that when they share stuff online, no. anybody can use it for whatever reason. No, no, nobody. No, no. That's why, nobody I mean, this is why we put copyright, you know, is for the yeah. dumb, just so we can say we did it. We put little copyrights on, yes. on our images and stuff. Just, yeah. you know, just in case, even though it doesn't, ultimately doesn't really matter because copyright is, you know, automatic as soon as you create a piece of work, but still it's yeah. like, but yeah. No. It's all to say that no, no one, there is a reasonable expectation mm -hmm. when you share your work right. that a person on the other side is not going to use it in a openly offensive or uh, illegal yeah. or damaging way, right? Like, right. yeah, they may save it somewhere. They may, they may, you know, who knows? They'll print it out and put it on their right, wall or right. something like that. But 
No, we all understand that you can't take it and go print it on a t-shirt. Right. You can't just take it and make it your album cover. You, they're, they're, we all understand yeah. that. All all reasonable people understand yes. that. Like the, the idea that just because you put it online means you have no recourse is absurd. Yeah, like said, yeah, yeah it's, 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 yeah. And a lot of a lot of the arguments like that are are absurd. There's a lot of dumb arguments like uh you 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 should be lucky that you're being included in this. You know, that just means you're a successful artist if you're lucky enough to be included in the data set. It's like, oh my God. Yeah. I mean, with I luck like that. I, yeah. I mean, you and I have probably both been around long enough that we've gotten emails for years that are the same flavor that are just like, you know, let me put your thing in my book for free or right. whatever. And it's like, it's the same thing. Yeah. It's just the, how many messages have we gotten over the year that have that same mood? You should be lucky. Yeah. I'm even interested. It's like, <laughs> I don't feel lucky. I definitely don't feel lucky. I One of the things, um, I guess part of the reason I sort of stayed out of the debate was because, and it's, you know, maybe it's, or, or the reason, not the, not the reason I've stayed out of the, the debate, but the reason I wasn't compelled to really look into it was because I felt like, you know, and this is, this is, um, I think, uh, uh, comes from living in America as an artist. I, for, my first thought was like, how is this going to affect me? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how is this going to affect, is this going to affect my earning? You know, because you have to, because they will fucking let you die in this country if you get sick. And you don't sure. have health insurance, you know, it's like, it's, you have to, you know, sadly you have to look out for yourself like that, or just, it's kind yeah. of like a natural response. But, um, and I thought, you know, the, the business I'm in, which is fine art people, none of my collectors would ever want an AI version of something I did as to collect. It's mm -hmm. maybe, maybe as a novelty or something, but part of when it comes to fine, cause I don't really do illustration as for a living, yeah. not very often. Um, and so for, I, I, you know, what my collectors want, they want an original physical piece mm -hmm. from me. And so I kind of feel like, okay, I'm sort of safe. And so sure. be because of that, it, I didn't have a, 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 I don't know, a huge incentive to even think about how dangerous it might be, but, yeah. um, but I was open to it. And your, your video really, um, is like I said, is kind of what changed by my feeling about the whole thing. Um, your your talk about the <laughs> this kind of dystopian uh, 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 conclusion you come to at certain points is pretty scary. Also, you know the idea yeah. of being like because it's like you know you you do a good good uh, job of sort of explaining why you feel the way you do, but then you give some examples of being fed. I mean, it's 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 very. Yeah possible and really scary and it's like you know you we, we all everyone's always we've always been worried about the robots taking over since terminator sure. and, and it's like okay this is kind of this is you know when you see the 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 how ai and bots and all of this stuff has affected the elections and has affected the society in a whole and how polarized we are this is like a big part of that is is you know, social media and bots and election meddling from other countries and things like this. Yeah. And, you know, and it's like, that's kind of, that's how it happens. If it's, you know, yeah, that's how it happens. Not surprising. with like cool robots and machine guns. But, you know, it's like, at least that yeah, would be cool. But... <laughs> God, it's, it's so it, it's, there's a, there's a, re, there's a subreddit called boring dystopia. And it's like, that's really, oh, really? What, we, what we've arrived at. It really captures the feeling. Yeah. It's like, where's my, Chrome muscle man <laughs> with the giant minigun, you know, red eyes, just storming across a, a, a wasteland with thunder, with thunder and lightning in the background. That's what I want. Instead, just a wall of automatically generated art. Fantastic. That's yeah, great. Yeah. yeah. Can you, can you go into that a little bit? Just, you know, some, sure. of, some of these thoughts you had about it. I thought they're, yeah. were these just like natural conclusions you came to, or did you, are other people talking about this? Because I thought they were pretty insightful. That, well, this is super interesting because, um, well, they were, at least as far as I remember, they were conclusions I came to. I, I was thinking about this stuff a lot uh, when I was writing the video, which took a, a while. I bet, it took a yeah. while to write it, yeah. Um, you know, 
I, I was thinking about this stuff a lot while on my runs and things like that. And, you know, your mind kind of tumbles around easily while mm -hmm. you're exercising and stuff. So it, uh, it, a lot of those things just popped up while I was trying to think things through. Um, but the, I haven't thought much about them since because you really, you're the only person I've talked to so far who has asked me about those mm. because, uh, and, and I say in the video, like the dystopian parts of that video, I admit are fortune telling it's right, me guessing. Right, right, right? right. But I, I thought it was important to include them in the video because, well, let's face it. When I wrote it, I didn't think the video was going to go semi-viral mm -hmm. within our industry. I made the video because I believed in it. And I wanted the info to go out there, but I thought that it was going to reach the 10,000 people that my videos usually reach. Right. Mm -hmm. But I, I was like, that's fine. That's a good thing. You know, right. that'll, that'll begin releasing some information. So it went further than that. But honestly, I put those in there because I was like, if that's all you're going to hit, you know, 10,000 ish people, you've kind of got to cover the different temperaments of what makes people care about something. Mm. So I tried to hit that in the video. I was like, I tried to hit the legal concerns. I tried to hit the the ethical concerns or maybe on the ethical part, it's like the um, sort of like the ethical semi-moral concerns. Mm. Like, is this what we want for right. art? You know, like those kinds of considerations. And then the third part was like, the people like me, the science fiction fans, like I've got to, <laughs> I've got to hit the people who are willing to go further out right. and and sort of show that I'm willing to go there. So um, interestingly enough, I think today, if I had known how how far reaching the video would become, I might cut that stuff out. Hmm. I think I might just, I might, it, if I had to known that. I think I would have done the beginning and end of the video. Mm. I think I would have done the first 15 minutes yeah. and the last 15 you can, minutes. You can always do a, a shorter one too. You know, you sure, can always yeah. do that just, just to have yeah, out well, there. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely not, I don't know. It's possible, but I'm, I'm not so bothered by, you know, yeah. they are my real opinions. Yeah, so no, I, no. It's not like I feel ashamed of and them. And it's not anything. like you're presenting, just, presenting them as if this is what's going to happen. It's like, you're just no. kind of giving, examples yeah, i of hope what i hope of, not no no yeah i didn't take it that way i didn't i didn't take it that way okay um, good yeah like i said in the video i admit up front like we're going to do fortune telling and i think the i i do think that's important because yeah. we we got blindsided by these things because just three years ago we were all like eh there's no way they could get right. good. Like we weren't, we weren't willing to go there yeah, right. with, with the data that was already present and we got screwed by yeah. it. I really do feel that way. So I've, I've tried to learn that lesson and though the, the sort of more dystopian stuff in the video is me trying to learn that lesson being like, what if I take this seriously? Well, like what really, what's going to happen here? And um, so I, I'd say, Again, if people want the my full darkness yes. there, they could go listen to the video. But the one, the main thing that really bothers me that I personally think is pretty is pretty likely is um the idea of connecting these things with the feeds that social media services and other services like them already have about us. So, you know, we all get frustrated when we're talking to our partner and we say, I knew I need a new pair of boots. And then you go look at Instagram and suddenly it's showing you boots right. when yesterday it was showing you the sofa right. that you had said you needed. <laughs> and we all just think that's a little weird, you mm -hmm. know, and everyone every says then, it too. Everybody has said that at one point. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's happened strange. to every single person. It has. Yes, <laughs> it, it, it definitely has. And we, we all feel in our guts. I think even if we buy the sofa, we all feel in our guts that's a little odd yeah. like what's going on here like it's a little it's a little strange and and we know that you know we know that it's not we know that's not the best sofa right it's right. it's the sofa <laughs> that paid the most for that ad right they they say it's like oh it's so tailored for right, you it's right. like no it's not man it's you know wayfair True. paid more for the ad than the other company yeah, so you're right. that's the sofa you're going to show me so we all think that's a little weird and those feeds are already becoming ever more detailed, right? They, mm -hmm. they, they know how old you are. They know your sexual orientation. They know what your interests are. They know when you watch stuff. So they know that you work from such and such hours. They know that this is when you consume your media. And 
probably they can guess a lot of crazier stuff about us mm-hmm. that we're we're really not we're really not aware of. Um, it would be pretty easy, I think, to just integrate all of this stuff and just produce artistic feeds that just don't stop emitting, right? Because to the ISPs, to these social medias, this profile of you that they have created is basically a series of keywords. It's right. basically male, this area, these interests. It's It could almost be rounded off in 40 words, right? And it's like, that's like a a word cloud version of you, of Chet. Right. You just plug that, right? It looks like a prompt. It looks <laughs> like something you would type it, into mid-journey, stable right. diffusion, whatever. You could just run these things all day. You could run them nonstop. And, and then you're getting a, a getting a feed that is so tailored to my taste that I just can't stop looking at it because it's so amazing because every image yeah. is like exactly what I love and it hits mm-hmm. me and I just, and it, and it, and it, it, you know, the idea is, uh, uh, it, I mean, that doesn't seem uh, uh, unbelievable to me. That seems very possible. That seems it, very uh, possible. Same. Yeah. It doesn't, it, it, I think that asks questions about why a company would want to do it, mm-hmm. but I think it's eminently possible. There's nothing technologically impossible yeah. there. The data is already there right. they, and they just need to, to plug it in. I mean, you could, you could ask, um, if companies would want to run these generators um, automatically, because running them automatically may remove the ability to copyright the images. My response to that is you already can't copyright the images for other reasons. Right, so right. why the hell would it, why the hell would they care? But it does, it does ask incentive questions on mm-hmm. the company side and things like that. But it may just be my cynicism, but I personally I feel like if a company can do it, they will do right, it. Like yeah. <laughs> if, if if Facebook Facebook already wants you to look at as many ads as possible, mm-hmm. if Facebook had perfect control and it was like, oh, well, we can show them content that is also an ad, but they won't know it's an ad. It's like, I can show them like this heartfelt piece of art based on the breakup that they just admitted to on Facebook, right. but I can stick a Coca-Cola can in the background. Right, and right. It's, it's like, you you'll... The problem is that once it slips behind the screen and it, it, like everything else, it becomes obtuse and obfuscated, you'll have no idea what's going on back yeah. there. It becomes yeah. the sofa thing again, where, yes, I know you want a sofa, but they're not being transparent on why are they showing you that right. sofa, right. you know? And it's it worries me. It yeah. really worries me, Chet. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 worth worrying about. Um, it's a, it, I, I mean, you, you can extrapolate and think, also about like okay and and this is more goes to the broader question of um you know data mining and having having so much inf- information about individual people is like i imagine if you had enough information about someone you could make them want to buy something you could yeah. make them want to do something without telling them just by what you're showing them somehow like the AI becomes so advanced and, and, you know, we're getting into sci-fi land again, but the AI is so advanced that it will show you this, some picture that, I don't know, maybe for me, some kind of weird monster or something that I would like, but it's configured in a way to sell this product that's completely unrelated yes, because exactly. it's got these certain details and it knows how the human mind works and what it responds to. And that is like really scary because that's, that goes, that's like subliminal you know, remember when subliminal advertising was a thing and like talked about in like yeah. the 80s and stuff where they put sex in the Pepsi yeah. can? And it's like, I don't think there's ever been any proof that that actually worked, but it was a thing that people talked about and and maybe they did it in ads, but, um, and we're flashing an image, you know, in, in, yeah. in a film. Um, that's actually, this is, you know, actually yeah. subliminal I, I, manipulation, you know? It would be so it's it would be so easy once these things are decent, even at the level that they're at, that I it's to me it's inevitable. In fact, it's so inevitable right. that I often find myself questioning, is it already happening? Yeah. And I just can't <laughs> detect it. Because um e- you know, we have pretty niche taste. So you had to right. go to monster, right? <laughs> but if we think about how things are are sold to a more general audience. Think about clothing. A lot of people pick their clothing, their aspirational clothing based off of 
my favorite celebrity mm-hmm. wears that. Right. How easy would it be to, they know who your favorite celebrity is, right? They know right. you look at Khloe Kardashian 40 times a day, right? So they can just say, well, this asks legal questions, but this the world they want, these legal questions are not a problem. But right. they say, all right, just generate, Khloe Kardashian doesn't wear FUBU, but let me, let's show them a photo of Khloe Kardashian wearing FUBU. Right. And then you'll look at it and you'll be like, oh, she wears FUBU. I'll, I'll, right. I'll get FUBU. It's like you can, you can start. Yeah, even on that very simple level. It's, on the simplest yeah. level. It's so easy. And it's exactly what those systems are good at. They're right. really, really good at doing that stuff. And it will, the same way that um, once people understood advertising was an art form, right? It produced an explosion of some of the most creative people in the world mm-hmm. bending the entirety of their not inconsiderable willpower towards manipulating people as efficaciously as possible. <laughs> right. <laughs> this will only deepen that. People will make whole careers out of deceiving people right. with false media like that and, and using it to great effect. And it's not like you couldn't do that now, right? It's not like you couldn't photoshop fubu onto chloe kardashian now but it's um is fubu even a brand what am i trying to say yeah it is i think it used to be i don't know if it still is i'm not i'm not up on fashion myself really quick i said fubu like three i said fubu three times and it did the thing my brain where i was like is that a word it is Is that actually a word okay just checking um (laughs) it it will you could do that now but it requires overhead it requires you to either know how to use photoshop or you have yeah. to hire somebody yeah. and, and you can time, get time and it takes time, yeah. you know, here it's like, you could do it tailor-made and you can do a billion a minute if you <laughs> want. It's just like, <laughs> it's just how, how comfortable are you leaving your phone on your table to process it instead of looking at something else. Right. right? So it's there. I think it's very inevitable. I think it's very worrying all of the questions that that asks, right? Like, um, about, privacy, likeness, you know, this crosses into areas like deep fakes and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and all of these questions, as far as I'm concerned, right, we can have interesting ethical debates about like, does a celebrity own their likeness if the likeness was generated from scratch instead of being photographed? Right. Like we could we could do, have sci-fi conversations about that as long as we want. But as far as I'm concerned, all of these questions are addressed substantially, maybe not adequately, but substantially, if we get our heads on straight at the data acquisition right up front. Right. We can we can cut so many of those concerns right. off right at the past. Yeah. If we just all agree as people, you got to acquire it ethically. And you so, don't just get to take whatever you want. And who... It, you know, who would be against that? The only people that would be against that would be the AI companies. Any, they have any, everything to gain. Yeah, yeah. Any, but any artist, I can't imagine that any artist, after hearing your argument, would would disagree. I just can't imagine. I'd love to hear a counter argument because I don't really think there is one. Because it's like, unless you're just like, it doesn't make any sense. There's, it doesn't make any sense that what there's nothing in it for you. There's everything in it for the AI companies. I guess maybe if you love AI so much that you want that you don't care, that it's not important to you that yeah. how they get the imagery, it's you love it that much. But still, you you that would just mean you're completely an unethical person. And I think most people have a certain amount of ethics, especially M- artists. Most people. Most do. people. Yeah. Most people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? I, that's been my experience. I mean, for me personally, since I put the video out, I have not spoken to anyone who once they get the information feels comfortable with right. the data stuff. Yeah. The the pushback, like you alluded to, is usually just from people who they really want it. You know, yeah. they're like it's they're, cool. They're like it's cool. Yeah, it's it, a fun, cool toy. You know, it's like exactly. I get it. Exactly. So they just they really want it, and that's pushing them towards oh fuck it, just get it. However, <laughs> right. right. But but even if you poke them, you're like right, I get it. But you're okay with the data, and they're like no, like no, it's, it all sounds messed up. Like, but they they really want the thing, and I have to say, I totally get that, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and I and I say it in the video, like 
I truly believe that if you made an ethical version of these systems, a huge amount of artists would choose to opt in. Oh, I really, yeah. I really, mm -hmm. I really do. I really do believe that because I, I know what artists are like, you know, and, and it, it may be difficult, you know, you may have to convince them, you may have to pay them, but if you really think it's some world changing revolution, it sounds like maybe you kind of should. It doesn't sound like it should be a cheap, easy thing yeah, that you right. can just <laughs> achieve by getting in there quick before anybody figures out what you did. It's right. Like, yeah. If the scale of what you're talking about is serious to you, it sure sounds like you should spend some goddamn money on it and pay the people who yeah. are making the data set yeah. Yeah. instead of just expecting to get it all for free. Yeah. And that would be kind of amazing. I mean, that would be cool. It's like, talk about taking an argument and flipping it on its head or taking taking the issues and just completely turning it around and being like, this is a benefit for artists that can get paid if they're willing. Yeah. I mean, that is so fair. It seems so I fair so. and such, it would be a great opportunity as well. Um, I don't know that I would want to do it still. Uh, I haven't seen it. But you have the choice. Yeah, but That's I have the important. choice. That is the important the thing. Exactly. Um, yeah. I have, I mean, just on a side note, I haven't seen, I've known a lot of people have done like Chet Zar monster, blah, blah, blah. I haven't seen mm -hmm. anything that looked like, I thought it looked like it was one of my paintings or that it was trying to even, it didn't even sure. get close. So um, I feel like I'm lucky so far, but it's just, a, I'm sure it's just a matter of time before, you know, my stuff gets in the, in the data set. Well, the, the interesting thing is, Okay, so I don't know if I've ever talked about this before, but as far as I know, I'm not in the data set, mm. right? I've I've looked, and uh, I, as far as I know, none of my stuff. You can is look. In there. To, how do you know to look? I mean, how do you, you find should, find out? You should. So only one of the data sets can you search right now. So I'm I'm I could be in something else right. or in a wider version of one of these, but. If you go to Have I Been Trained, this is the most commonly used one, haveibeentrained.com, yes. they let you search Lion 5B. Like I said at the okay. beginning, that's not the only data set. Right. They're mixing in other things, but you can look in there. So just from that little slice, right? And maybe I don't know about other ways to search other data sets, but from that little slice, as far as I know, I'm not in it, right? My right. my in, And my interest here is like, um, I, I just think this stuff is wrong up and down. I actually don't, you know, I mostly teach art at this point, you know, like you, I've kind of stepped away mm -hmm. from illustration and commercial art for completely other reasons. Mm -hmm. And these days, I don't know. It's like, I'm, I'm more of almost like a creativity therapist at this point than a, right. than someone who does <laughs> illustration or commercial art. It's like, so I actually feel, I don't personally feel attacked by right. this stuff yet, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but the it's so clearly wrong to me up and down that amazingly, I seem to be able to muster more anger than people who are in the data set <laughs> sometimes. So I, I, I don't know what that's about. But um, the this asks a lot of interesting questions. So first off, we can we tend to assume the bigger the data set, the better it's going to get, right? That's how I feel. But I do want to put an asterisk there because... I've been able to talk to machine learning people and stuff like that since my video came out. You know, a lot of people have reached out to me mm. and, you know, I've been connected with people and things like that. That's actually debatable. There's people you can speak to uh, who don't work at these companies, go figure, who actually say it can't get that much better, even if you put more data. Mm. In. So I just want to put an asterisk there that it is actually debatable how much better they could get on the current trajectory, even if you dump tons more data. Interesting into it. That's math. That's not my mm -hmm. world, right? right? That's that's for that's for the mathematicians to figure out. But I do want to put that out there so that people have that data point. But let's say let's say that's not the case and that it will get better even if it slows down, right? Even if there's a fall off, it will get better the more data they put into it. That will incentivize the companies to trawl as much right. data as possible, which if the current legal loopholes are withheld, they'll just dump more and more energy and money into it, and they will try to produce as big a data set as possible. So it's almost inevitable that you'll wind up in there at some point. Right. right. Another, another interesting problem is that I believe it's mid-journey. 
It might be both mid journey and stable diffusion. Uh, if anyone's interested in these particular facts, you can look up for yourself, whether it's one or the other or both, but one of them, let's say it's mid journey for now is, is also trained on a subset of lion five B called lion aesthetic, which means that they have pre decided for the user. These are prettier images and these are less nice images. Mm -hmm. Now those choices are being made, not just to photographs, but to art, right? So right. the, you, we don't know what's going on back there, right? Even, so Chet's paintings might be in the data set, right? But in the lion aesthetic part, whoever made these assumptions, actually, I unfortunately, I believe it's another fucking robot that decides <laughs> what's aesthetic oh, and what isn't. Oh, of course, isn't. you know, yeah, you it's know. Like, yeah, it's, it's not a person, but <laughs> the robot could have decided, hmm, Chet's paintings really aren't that good. Right. So it'll <laughs> dump you down in the rating. So it'll be less inclined, even if you ask it for a Chet Czar painting, it'll resist right. giving you Chet right. because it's trying to give you a very good image mm -hmm. first and foremost, and you're pushed down in the lion aesthetic right. rating. So there's all sorts of weird stuff going on behind the scenes there that I don't think is that really what we want from the gateway to our creativity? This thing that is pre-weighting things and determining what's right. good, what's bad. It's it's uh, it's not a good look, Chief. I think the optics on that are pretty bad. <laughs> and um, it, I'm, I'm sure that problems like that, that choice to use something like a predetermined aesthetic hierarchy for the images, that is a form of optimization. And as these things become more complicated, they're only going to need to be more and more optimized. So those problems are going to propagate. Those problems are going to get worse and worse. And those are going to produce a lot of weird effects. Who knows what, what those might be. It might be that it pr starts producing low and co lowest common denominator or biased right. versions of particular kinds of images and things like that. But um, there's all sorts of interesting things controlling what you can and cannot get out of these things, even in uh, some of these more wide open models, right? If, yeah. if they're pre-weighting, if they're already making a hierarchy of what's more aesthetic right. and what isn't, there is some influence going on there. Well, I, I was thinking about that from a different perspective too, is if you're just scraping all imagery without um, selecting what is good and what is bad, there's a lot of terrible... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, um, bad art out there to, you know, that's not going to serve yeah. the AI, you know? So there, it seems mm -hmm. like there has to be some kind of, I mean, it seems like it seems, seems less about to me, I don't know, but you know, I'm an idiot, but it's like less about uh, quantity and more about quality. I would imagine it seems, you know, it's more like the quality of the input, but yeah. Well, I think they definitely want, they want high quality data points. It's just that at the scales that this, that they need them, you know, 5 billion, yeah, right. it's, it, it's intractable to try to manually sift through right, that right, set. Right. It's very, very, it's very, very difficult. Um, but the artist stuff, at least on the good side, good artworks are incredibly valuable to the, to right. the data set. I mean, it's, again, we're, what I'm going to talk about here is trying to peer into what is, as I understand it from machine learning people, it's a black box. We don't actually understand what choices it's making right. to arrive at its conclusions, but there's so many interesting articles you can read out there where, okay, so with stable diffusion, uh, Greg Rutkowski, who does... Uh, well known for fantasy digital paintings has become the poster boy right. for being yeah, abused across yep. the board. They, I believe his name has been prompted over well over a hundred thousand times at this point, trying to get art that references his work or uses it or tries to get his vibe. There's interest. I've read an interesting article once that framed it as like why you should always use Greg's name because it makes the program work harder. There's something about it trying to hit the level of an artist or of a well-made piece of art that produces 
significantly different results. That article was written by an ML person and someone who ostensibly likes these machines because he was telling people to do it. But mm -hmm. he created, um, he did the same prompts side by side and just added Greg's name or it didn't have Greg's name. And the differences were night and Interesting. day. It's, it seemed, and again, the seeming here is important. This is, I'm saying how it seems on the outside. It's, it's see, as I understand it, no one actually knows what's going on to make it do that. But um, the seeming here is that it makes it, it cues the program into trying to create value groups, color harmonies, mm -hmm. a composition that has some sort of clarity to it rather than sort of looking at incidentals that it might get from, you know, photography or uncomposed photography or something like that. So the, the art does seem to have a huge impact on the data set. It seems to be the part of the data set because the data set contains things that are in art. It seems to be the part of the data set that makes it produce images that make people go, holy shit, a robot made that? Right. No fucking way. Which is, it's important to wrap our heads around that because there's a double standard going on in the discussion where people are trying to talk like the data doesn't matter. Right. On one hand, they're like, that's just what it's looking at. It's just learning. Right. That, which, right. You know, we can talk about that later. But um, but then on the other hand, if you actually look at what happens when you insert an artist's name or not, what happens when you take the art out of it, it's actually very valuable. Yeah, it actually right. makes a huge <laughs> difference in the quality of the the output. So the double standard there is um May, uh, yeah. I think a little bit deceptive. Yeah, major double standard there. It's just basically proving. Proving yeah. the proving your point that you know it's it, it is about stealing artwork, good artwork from good artists. Um, yeah. It's funny. The funny thing about I, I got a, a couple a couple things I wanted to mention. Um, mm -hmm. One is, I think think ten years from now, how dated all this AI art is going to look. It's going to look yeah. like it's, it's going to look dated. Like you, yeah. you can see artwork or fashion or anything from a certain time period. And, and it's like, it does not stand the test of time because yeah. it's so tied to its time. Just the, the yeah. more kind of stock stuff. I mean, I see people doing amazing stuff, um, but, but by processing and, and cutting things up and kind of making it their own a little bit more, but the stuff that kind of, that comes right out of the box, it's just like, it's, it's good. It's not going to you know, it's going to be like, it's not going to be cool in a few years. It's going to be like, no. oh, obviously that's a stable diffusion or whatever. Um, yeah. Not not that that matters, but. Um, It'll look very retro. In fact, there'll be a filter that you yeah, can right. put on your AI art that's like, make it look like AI art from 2020 <laughs> you know, or 2022. The other thing that I think is hilarious is that, you know, it seems like they're trying to. Oh, that looks so good, but there's an extra foot there or the fingers are weird. It looks really, it's so close. It's like, that's what it's good at. It's good at making this fucked up, mutated, creepy ass shit with weird limbs and body parts. You know, that that's where it excels. I think that's interesting. I don't know what it means. I think it's, 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 um, I don't know, on maybe like some kind of cosmic level it's it's interesting that the stuff that it, it sells at it excels at is this completely disturbing imagery you know right. that maybe that's a little bit of a, like a a cosmic clue of, <laughs> of the potential of the whole thing if you're into that sort of thing but um but it's funny that they're they keep trying you know the, the idea is that they want to keep perfecting it to where they don't have mm -hmm. a person with like eight fingers you know this beautiful woman that's got like a her hand is like connecting to her other yeah. arm and it's like you know i i especially as kind of as a dark artist it seems like you know leaning into the disturbing aspect of it would be really the best way to use it kind of like using its strengths mm -hmm. um anyway that's completely beside the uh the argument uh, we're talking about well here, taken, though. but, yeah, but it's, it's very interesting. but it is, it's, it is kind of interesting. Um, so it, don't you think that it seems to me like this is a perfect opportunity, not that maybe this is just me being overly positive and idealistic, but it seems like if, if you were, if someone was to create 
uh, a new AI program and includes included the artists and mm -hmm. kept it transparent and worked with artists to create like an ethical AI. It seems like that would be every art. You would have the support of every artist in the world, even if they weren't like choosing to be in it, they would support the project. And it seems like yeah. that would be really, um, uh, it would seems like it would be a good time for something like that. Although I don't know, maybe that's not where the money is. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> well, well, I I can tell you, people are working on it. Oh people yeah, are working on it. Yeah, I oh, think cool. um, I think one of the interesting, one of the interesting things going on with the debate right now, and when I say the debate, I do mean it in the most unfortunate terms. I mean angry comments on Twitter All and right. YouTube and things like that. Um, is that people right now are sort of operating under the assumption that. Stable Diffusion, Imogen, Midjourney are everything. That they are the industry. They are machine learning. They are text to image generators monolithically. Mm -hmm. And that they assume that everyone in that part of the tech world agrees with them. And they do not. There's lots of people in machine learning, because I've heard from them and things like that, that don't agree that feel the same way artists do, that they hear the data stuff and they write, even though they make those kinds of products, they're mm -hmm. like, you can't, you can't do that. That's not the way you're supposed to do it. So I think that right now, and this is having all sorts of effects, companies like Stable Diffusion and these other people who were very fast to market, right? They are benefiting from the fact that they stole a march on us in the middle of the night and they surprised us. And they just put it out there mm -hmm. before anyone could look into right. it, before anybody knew what they were doing. And they're still living in the beneficial space of that. So they're the ones that have all of the oxygen in the room going towards them, both the good energy and the negative energy mm -hmm. from people who are worried, right? And that is making it so that people haven't really caught on that there are other people in machine learning and AI who their product is going to take longer to bring to market, right. right? Because they're trying to do it in a better way, but they don't agree with what those people did and the viewpoints of those companies and their interpretation of things like text and data mining exemptions. They, they also see the same problems that we do. And I think that it's going to be very good for um, the hearts of artists to hear from them soon when, you know, they, they start getting a little bit more traction, a little bit more, energy, they're going to hear from them and they're going to be like, oh, okay. So we're not crazy, right? right? Because right now, right now, all you hear is the people who want to use these particular ones mm -hmm. that stole the march, defending them vehemently on their axiomatic assumptions. They're even the people who are defending these programs who want to use them, they don't know ethical right. options right. are coming. So they're just like, if I want to use this thing, I've got to defend the asshole, right? Mm -hmm. I've got to defend the people who just right. threw it out there. It's going to make it better for us. And it's going to, a lot, I believe, once people see that the machine learning community is not all in agreement on that, they're going to kind of soften on that. They're going to be like, all right, okay, well, you know, maybe we don't need to defend the wholesale rapacious strip mining of everybody's <laughs> data if we want some right. chance of using a tool like this. And I think that there will be some movement over to more ethical systems. The, the worry there, the question there is how long exactly would that take? Because right. again, I'm not a mathematician, but it seems right now, if you start open source, public domain, opt-in, you're going to have so many fewer data sets that it's just not going to be as good a product, right? right? So it's going to be difficult to get people excited for it. And it's going to be, yeah. it's going to take a good CEO to sort of like get people rallying yeah. behind it and, and believing in it and wanting to contribute to it. So it, they really benefit a lot. Those companies that sort of rushed in, they're benefiting a lot from the unethical thing that they did right. and the fact that they're writing the narrative right now. But I do want to point out that from the knowledge that I have, I do think that's going to erode. You know, time is going to catch up with them. Competitors will arise. Uh, 
people in their community who do not agree with them will rise up and get platforms and things like that. And they will, that will start to erode that narrative that they have put out there, that this is just the way it's going to go. It's already here. Don't even question me. Right. If you're thinking about this, you're wasting your time. All of that stuff is going to be eroded. Right. In my person. Yeah, that's well, that's good. And, and you know, that's that's the purpose of sharing this information is just I, I just can't see how anybody after hearing watching your initial video um, would could disagree with you. I just can't imagine how any ethical normal person would disagree with what you're saying how it's just uh uh it's it's not right and you you make that great the great point about uh music the difference between image ais and music ais i mean yeah. that is like a crucial point to me the, the, yeah. just whole you know just if you could maybe a, a, quickly just talk about that it's like there's a whole different sure. there's a different standard for music ais and um I'll I'll actually read it right from the script okay, if you cool. don't mind. Yeah, just because it's be great. it's the most cohesive version of it. Yeah, it's great. Let me just scroll down here. Okay, so this is from the video. There is an egregious double standard pertaining to how these systems handle visual art versus other creative industries. Take the glaring example of Dance Diffusion, the upcoming AI music tool coming from a team within Stability AI, the makers of text-to-image model Stable Diffusion. Let me read to you from an article describing how Dance Diffusion is trained. So this is a quote. Dance Diffusion is also built on data sets composed entirely of copyright-free and voluntarily provided music and audio samples. Because diffusion models are prone to memorization and overfitting, releasing a model trained on copyrighted data could potentially result in legal issues. In honoring the intellectual property of artists while also complying to the best of their ability with the often strict copyright standards of the music industry, keeping any kind of copyrighted material out of training data was a must, end quote. If you think you couldn't have heard what you just heard, go back and listen again. <laughs> the fact that such a baffling double standard exists within the product suite of a single AI company makes it hard to imagine any explanation other than bad faith towards visual artists and the callous belief that it's okay to trample them in particular because they are less inclined towards self-defense and litigation than other industries, i.e. music. I want you to imagine swapping the word music in that paragraph with the word art instead. Would that really be so crazy? Does that suggest that I am a fearful Luddite who is simply resisting change? I don't think so. I think most sane people would see that honoring the intellectual property of artists is a logical thing to extend to visual artists, not just musicians. All right. Thank you, Chad. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> that, that was seriously one, one of the moments where it was like, oh my God, in the, within the same company, yeah, within it's the same like company. how it's an it's another product being developed by Stability AI. And so, yeah. how could I mean? And 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 I am I am sure there's been no acknowledgement whatsoever from this. These is anyone? Are they coming out and defending themselves at all, or they just are not ignoring any kind of criticism in that way? Because how no, could they I mean, defend that? There's no defending it. They when they defend themselves, as a, as I alluded to earlier, they defend the basis of their business model. Their defense, which you know, you can see the CEO of Stable Diffusion occasionally choosing to defend himself against a tweet or something like that from people who are concerned. They defend themselves against with that point. That's what they care about. They defend themselves saying, We are totally within our rights to collect right. this data and <laughs> use it because it's being collected by law, right, right, which right. is a nonprofit. So, he even called he even called it a charity at one point. And I was like, Okay, like the, a very interesting, <laughs> never heard of another company basing their entire business model, <laughs> their billion dollar business model off of the efforts of a charity, right. surprising. <laughs> so um, it, uh, yeah, it, it really requires you to do a lot of mental gymnastics to find a reason why that double standard is okay. And, you know, we're human beings, so 
I have received messages from people who are willing to do the mental gymnastics. Okay. They're like, you don't understand, you know, music is more prone to, there's only so many harmonies that can be created. Bullshit. With notes. It, it's it's Bullshit. just like, okay. All right. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> let's, 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 let's take it to court. I think let's, let's suss it out in court. That's what I say. So, um, but that's, that's the important thing to remember. These companies, I have never, ever, ever seen them defend themselves on the grounds of fair use, of transformativeness, of copyright infringement. That's not what they care about. Yeah, they're and not that is going not there. what no, that's not what allows their business model. Their business model is based on the fact that they are allowed to collect whatever they want based on these particular nonprofit and research oriented exemptions. And they can then turn that into a product that happens to produce a transformative thing, but they, they never talk about that stuff. It's yeah. about, it's about the data acquisition exemptions and the vast majority of all of the other conversations that are muddying the waters right now are coming from just people, not at the companies. They're coming from people who are trying to justify their actions, not right. their actions, the company's mm -hmm. actions. But the companies are only interested in the ground floor axiomatic supposition that they are allowed to do whatever the fuck they want yeah. with people's data, so long as they're getting it from a nonprofit they happen to fund. You know, that's <laughs> that's all they care about. That is all they care about. Amazing. So Pretty amazing, do, yeah. Do, do, do you think that... Uh... Uh, well, maybe you could talk about this. There's, there's, uh, I saw you share, um, a case that's come up, uh, mm -hmm. a legal case, uh, which, which is pr the only way the c big corporations ever change is when they're forced to through, you know, getting sued or people yeah. taking legal action. So, um, there, there's a case happening right now. Right. And, and, and yeah, and th this is the answer, right? really is 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 it's got to be settled in the courts correct is that is that your I, opinion i do think so it's going to be hold on a second i'm trying to pull up the site for it so i can share it no worries with people i have i wrote git buh litigation not git hub <laughs> <laughs> litigation oh yes it's git uh, github uh yes so if people want to learn more here we go. It's githubcopilotlitigation.com. Again, that's githubcopilotlitigation.com. There you can find the class action complaint that was filed against GitHub. Um, so as to, I'll, I'll come back to this real quick, but just to, but to answer your, your question, is this the path forward? The path forward involves litigation, I think, that is to say this, suing people, right? Saying you you can't do that. You made a misstep and we need we need some sort of remedy. We need an injunctive relief, things like that. Um, I think legislation is also important. So it's not just suing people, but passing laws that mm. get clear for the modern era about what is okay to do yeah, with people's true. data and what isn't. You know, we just need to codify it. It's yeah. it's not surprising. It's on one level, it's surprising that all of this has happened, but on the other level, it's not because yeah. no one was taking this stuff seriously. There, it was on nobody's radar that that robots would get interestingly good at making art. It's like that was a <laughs> laughable idea three years ago, right? So it's not surprising that nothing is caught up, right. you know, copyright law, the case law around litigation and the legislative history has nothing to say on these points because they've only just become relevant. Right. So we need to we need to take that seriously. We need to admit that we're we're trying to put a, a square peg in a round hole if we try to apply the 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 fair use copyright and data mining exemption stuff to this thing that nobody was predicting. No those things weren't written for machine learning right. programs that were scaping, scraping data wholesale yeah. that the whole world was putting on the internet. No one, no one was predicting that. Right. So we have to admit that we, we've we got to figure this out. And that requires litigation, legislation, and it requires us to to organize. You know, we, we need to create groups that stand up for their rights. We need to educate people on what these companies are doing and, and the what the future might look like if we let loopholes like this 
just spiral out forever. Right. It, it, you know, there it, is there a is there a place now, like a a a place you can go that kind of has all of this info? Is there anyone doing it, like like a like a a ground zero or a a, a home base for for this kind of thing? I, or, or do you need to do it? <laughs> is it, is, 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 is it going to fall on your shoulders to make well, the website? <laughs> it's it's coming. It's coming. That that's like I. I can't, um, you know, I, I can't, I guess, I guess just to be perfectly frank, like it's not my place to reveal other people's plans and stuff that they're putting oh, okay. together and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just, just for the people who are interested, like just keep your eyes on the space okay, and, and rest assured that from people who have reached out to me, you know, because the video got reached, I can tell you people are taking this incredibly seriously. Excellent. And yes, they are they are doing things. They're trying to organize and Great. they're doing things. Excellent. It, this this is definitely not uh, for anybody out there who thinks, oh my god, this is happening and no one's doing anything. That's not the case. Oh, good. People good. are people are doing things. People That's are good. doing things. I apologize if you can hear the person blasting music right outside my window. I'm hoping that's coming from a car. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so, so yes, things are going to happen. And, um, and I think things are, yeah, people are taking it very seriously. And I think that people who look into these things are catching on pretty quick that this is going to become relevant to so much more than art. So there is right. a lot of, and there's a lot of energy around these discussions right now. So, uh, just to reference the the GitHub Copilot thing again, this is a a class action that was just recently filed by a law firm, uh, Joseph Severi Law Firm, um, along with some supporting counsel, where they are uh, they're going to do a class action against OpenAI Codex and GitHub Copilot, which are AI programming tools. I'm not a coder, so apologies to everyone out there who's a coder uh, for bad terms and things like that. But um, these are AI assistants to help people while they code. So it's almost like predictive text for coding. Again, apologies for horrible generalizations for people who know more. But um, the problem here is that these products were trained in the same way that the image AIs are being trained, were trained off of the data that was collected on the open source site, GitHub. Well, not all of it's open source, but a lot of it is. It's famous for being open source and a repository for a lot of freely made available code, right? Much in the same way that you might say artists freely share mm -hmm. their artwork online. People <laughs> freely shared their code. And um, they trained these programs off of all of this code and people are pissed. They don't like that. Oh, they, they, oh, they, okay. it's, it, and there's... Mu there's a lot of it a analogies here. So uh, it seems the main thing that triggered these the litigation is that GitHub Copilot has been proven to regurgitate copyrighted code and under licensure code verbatim, including errors in the code or... Wow. Um, it's very interesting. I would advise anyone who's interested in this stuff to please read the class action complaint letter. Yeah. It's very interesting. I'll, I'll link it. I'll it link it in the text also. Yeah. It's super interesting. So there's, um, to give another example, not just errors, but um, there's, it will repeat verbatim exercise versions of code that are from coding textbooks or coding websites where you're supposed to give the proper answer to a coding question, right? So at the end of the code, it'll be like it equals question mark saying for you, the <laughs> student, what's the answer? Right. But a, but Copilot will show the question mark. It'll put the question mark in the code that it's offering, That's which so is funny. hard proof yeah. that it's just repeating it verbatim. Now, there's analogs there to the image AIs because it's very, this is a huge discussion we could have for three hours, just does anyone understand what overfitting within an image AI model actually means, what its scale is, what, what is the level of direct image infringement in these models? But that is the analog here, right? So those examples, that example that I just gave in GitHub Copilot, is an example of overfitting. It shows that the program does not actually understand what it is doing, or else it would understand that it's completely irrelevant to 
ask for an answer to a coding problem in a real coding situation. It doesn't understand what it's doing. It's just reacting statistically to probabilities. Mm -hmm. And what it was given was that textbook question over and over and over again. So it has made this error and repeated it verbatim. There are situations that we have hard evidence for. Probably the one that most people know is the meme that went around early with the bloodborne concept art used inside, not concept art, marketing art used inside of, I believe it was mid journey, but the bloodborne marketing art, the famous shot of the hunter that's on the box art for bloodborne is in the data set a certain number of times so as to produce overfitting. And it was just being copy pasted right into the image outputs. I mean, it's one wow. for one or it's 98% exactly the same. It's, wow. To any reasonable person, it's clear that it's just it's just the thing. It's right. just the actual marketing art, exactly. But we have found many other examples since then, right? There's it's not just the 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 bloodborne stuff. There's well, I, I won't sit here and list the examples, but yeah, Bek people Bek Shinsky got really. <laughs> but it's one thing Bekshinsky got super ripped off. I mean, it's so there's yeah. so many like the the whole look of Bekshinsky's work was like. The, the yeah. mid journey look is Bekshinsky. Yeah. It's insane. And I think that that's probably produced by his over representation. Right. Model. Right. Now, mind right. you, it's, it's not over representation. If you want to rip off Bekshinsky, right. right? Then, it's, <laughs> then it's just right, baby. But the, the fact that it, if we were speaking about a neutral ethically inclined machine learning person, not an artist, they would not want that. They would want it to right. be balanced. Right. They, they wouldn't want it to lean right. one way or the other like that, or at least they wouldn't want it to lean out of control. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, so there's analogies there on the GitHub copilot thing. Uh, very direct ones. You know, we have examples of overfitting on either side. The debates against that are similar. You know, a machine learning person will say, well, it's overfitting in just that particular case. It doesn't always repeat verbatim. Same arguments had on the other side with uh, text to image AIs. That to me, I, I don't find those arguments compelling, mostly because these companies are, if you know, that there are cases and you don't have a, a cohesive collection of all the cases. If you know there are cases where it's going to flat out infringe, repeat verbatim, that is to say, reproduce the copyrighted material, and you know that, how on earth can you feel comfortable then offering commercial licenses right. to your end user when they can have no reasonable expectation to know whether their outputs contain copyrighted material or not. Right. You're you're just giving them blanket, they say, they love to market off of it. They say, you have commercial use of your images with everything you make with stable diffusion right. or mid journey. And it's like, you know, it overfits. Is the, is the person on the other side supposed to know every image in, in Lion 5B? Yeah. They're the ones who, they, that's bad faith. Right. That right. is them. They are actively screwing their user base. Right. And they know that that stuff is in there. And there's hard evidence for those things to be in there. So the analogies between the GitHub case and the text image case are very direct, I think. There are some things that are not so direct, but I believe are going to become relevant very soon. So, for example, a big part of the GitHub litigation is the problems with licensure. Because since this was all trained off of one website, unlike the art stuff, which is collected from everywhere on the internet, we're dealing with a, a graspable amount of licenses for this code. So when people upload things to GitHub, they pick usually a license under which they are distributing it. So there's a drop-down menu. They say, mm. I'm releasing this under Creative Commons, or this is my copyrighted thing, don't you that, or more complicated licenses, even a little, almost like Creative Commons, but uh, more restricted. So you can use it in nonprofit, but not profit ventures, or you can use it in nonprofit and profit, but you have to credit me, right? A right. lot of these licenses demand attribution and acknowledgement, which again, when we were talking earlier about the text and data mining exemptions in the EU slash UK, uh, I'm sorry that I don't remember which one is specifically, they ask it's part of the exemptions. There needs to be proper acknowledgement. So the GitHub case deals with that directly because the licenses can be 
they can be found. It's all collected right, in one thing. So right. that that case is very concerned with the filing of the serial numbers. That is the, that is to say, the licenses off of all of this code, and then just regurgitating it without honoring the licenses, right. which is a violation of GitHub's own terms of service because they're the ones who put the licenses there. We're not we're not looking at a million different right. websites. It's one website. So that's a very interesting nicety that right now doesn't quite apply to the text to image art models but with something like DeviantArt's recently released um AI model i think that if more things like that happen those questions are going to become very relevant because DeviantArt so for, you know th this happened recently and you know these conversations age like milk because things are moving so fast but <laughs> la last week I, I think it was on Friday it was just a couple of days ago DeviantArt released DreamUp which is a text -to image model that they're hosting on their end from what I can tell and we could use a lot more data on this um, it's just stable diffusion a lot of mm. people are assuming that it is already that DeviantArt has done something to stable diffusion, like they have added in DeviantArt art. Mm -hmm. And as far as I can tell, we have no evidence of that. That is not what has happened. My interpretation, which again, we'd all love to hear more details, it is stable diffusion out of the box, but it's important to remember that stable diffusion already has a lot of art from DeviantArt in it. The, the pre-packaged version of Stable Diffusion that is out there does have right. DeviantArt stuff on it. I'm just saying DeviantArt didn't then go and add more, right. which whether that's because they didn't want to or because it's technologically infeasible is a technical question. It would be very difficult for them to add more. You'd need to retrain Stable Diffusion mm -hmm. from scratch, which would be prohibitively expensive. It's another problem, which is that the machines at this point cannot unlearn things. You need right. to remake them from scratch to take things oh, out. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's all right. So I've gone <laughs> yeah. on a lot of tangents there, but um, it is stable diffusion out of the box. And the way that they are presenting it, the reason they're doing that is so that they can offer an option that gives people some control. So it's like they've said, stable diffusion's out there in the wild. It's very dangerous. We're going to put it in DeviantArt and we're going to add some guardrails. So it's going to automatically assign a tag that says your art was made with AI. And if you prompt with someone's name, we're going to ask you to give proper credit. I actually don't have perfect. I'm not sure if it forces you to credit if you do a prompt or if it just asks you nicely to mm -hmm. give credit. If you use someone's right. name in a prompt, they want you to tag the artist. Um, and they're trying to do add some guardrails there. The other thing when they announced is that they said, we're going to give you the option to add tags to all of your deviations, AI made or not, that say this is not for AI training data, right? We don't, this piece of art, don't train the AIs on this, don't scrape it, right? And um, they began that by being an opt-out function. There was a lot of pushback right. immediately, and they switched it so that everyone is automatically opted out, and yep. you have to choose to offer your stuff up right. for AI. But I want everybody to understand, as we've just because of what we've discussed in this talk, that is all completely irrelevant. Stable Diffusion and all of these other companies do not base their business model on listening to any company like DeviantArt. They don't care what the licenses are on images. And if they were to pretend to care, it would undermine the entire basis of their business. Right. <laughs> like we've said, they, the axiomatic proposition they're operating under is that they are already golden. They don't need to ask anyone's permission. They need no consent. Everything that they're doing is already 100% legally okay based on their interpretation of the text and data mining exemptions, which as we've said, vary wildly and are underdeveloped as you go from country to country, locality to locality. So DeviantArt cannot help you. It's pure optics. And if you read their new terms of service for what they added, it's four miserable little paragraphs in their, in their <laughs> terms of service. They admit they can't do anything. And they are just encouraging people and they are encouraging 
the machine learning community and other websites to agree that this is all a good idea and that we should all do this. Right. It would be insane for a company like Stable Diffusion to agree to honor this because if you look at something like Lion 5B, um, I've been saying Stable Diffusion, but in this case, we might be saying, should Lion honor this, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm extending that to Stable to Stability AI because as we said, Stability is deeply invested. They're a huge part of why their product is good and they fund them, right? But for Lion to accept this, to be like, oh yes, well, you want that, then sure, we'll do it. We'll make all of DeviantArt off, off limits, right? If you look at Lion 5B, the majority of the data is scraped from just Pinterest. So if they were to honor something like what DeviantArt is saying, all you would have to do to unhorse the entire business model of stable diffusion is to get Pinterest to do it. They would never allow that. Right. I mean, if you got if you got Pinterest to 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 do this and stability felt at all cajoled into honoring it, it would wipe out half the data set. It would it would eliminate wow. half yeah. the data set. And you can imagine what kind of damage it would do if you got ArtStation to agree, uh, Shopify, which is another site that is a huge contributor to Line 5B. It's not an equal distribution of the right. internet. The, the trawling is like so many things. It gets most of the input from a minority of the websites. And then th there's a huge smattering of stuff that doesn't even contribute 1%, right? Right. So they would, they would, they're, they're not going to like this. And again, their whole, the whole reason they're making these models is because they believe they don't have to give a shit right. about any of this stuff. Licenses are not a part of the concern. So DeviantArt, so for now, if I, if I give them as much charity as possible, for now, this is entirely irrelevant. And it will only become useful and relevant if we succeed in litigation or legislation to tell these companies that yes, they must respect licenses like these. So for now, this is useless. Right. This means nothing. First, we must win in court. Something needs to happen in court that puts some sort of real stricture on these companies who want to do this that says, you know, you can't do it. You can't claim you're a nonprofit to collect it and then do it for for profit. And the courts would need to tell them if there is a protocol or a license that requests that something not be used for training AI, you must honor it. Without that, they would never do it. Yeah. All of their incentives go the other way and it would completely unhorse their business model and it would destroy their products. Right. Once they, once they have been forced to honor that, then suddenly these licenses become the state of the art. Then they become very, very important. But for now, it's nothing. And honestly, I really wish DeviantArt would have understood that. Yeah. And instead, there was a better place to put their shoulder to the wheel. Right. It would have been nice if DeviantArt had pushed for legislation, right. litigation, if they had sued. That would have, the the anger that immediately <laughs> boiled up under DeviantArt's ass as soon as they announced yep. this, it would have been, instead of fire, it would have been bubbling golden ambrosia if mm. they had said, we're suing Stable Diffusion. Right. They, the community would have been like, DeviantArt, you're the best. Oh, we yeah. love you, baby. Like, it would have been a mush party. It would have been the best. <laughs> but they, yeah, it Missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. Missed, that's how I read it. I read it as a missed opportunity. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like uh, Stable Diffusion or... Lion has uh, uh, found a loophole, or no, it's it's Stable Diffusion is the company. It's like mm -hmm. they found a loophole to where they feel they are operating legally. Yep, and they're just sticking to it and doubling down to it and just dub doubling down on it and admitting to anything other than that is kind of undermining their whole business. Yep. So, and they, they, so they kind they, of can't <laughs> unless they're forced exactly. to, you know, they, un they understand that. I yeah. mean, the, they, they're, they're smart. They have yeah. counsel, yeah. like they understand that. And fuckers, they, <laughs> I don't, I don't doubt they will move to those things. Yeah. Right. If they, if they lose on text and data mining, I think they will then move on to fair use questions right. and things like that. But 
they're smart enough to know that they need to hold the line on the axioms, the ground floor. Right. They need to hold the line on that first and then everything else follows. And, and I do think that that's where we need to focus our energies. I mean, it's not like the the fair use questions aren't com- are completely irrelevant. Like, because, so me, for example, I'm personally not super concerned right now because I feel there's a bigger fight to be had. I really just don't have a lot of energy left over to worry about if an end user of an AI can copyright their artwork, right? Right, right. now they can't, right? right? At least if they're honest, right? right? They can li- they can lie and copyright it, right? Yeah. But <laughs> if, if they're if they're honest, the way it stands right now, uh, the U at least the U.S. Copyright Office is not granting copyrights to things that are mostly made with AI. Mm. So, for the people who are concerned about that certainly for the people who want to be able to copyright those things for them the fair use questions are super relevant right, right. but it's just not for me I, and i don't it's like and even if an answer was acquired on those things right even if a court decreed firmly like it is absolutely fair use or it is absolutely not fair use it doesn't affect what happens with the data acquisition at the ground floor right. so for me personally my energies are all on the that first step that first step. And then those other things will follow. But interestingly enough, I, at least from my interpretation, it's like, if we can get our heads on straight on the, the data acquisition, we've cleaned up. I mean, all, all of the other stuff kind of, it gets completely adjusted and a lot of the questions about it are already answered, you know? Right. So yeah, I, I do think that's the best place to focus and to, to think about these things and figure out what the hell is actually happening. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I mean, and that's a good thing ultimately because it's like you know it would be cool to have that tool and be able to use it Mm -hmm. and not have all this other bullshit uh yeah embedded in it you know to not be supporting you know the only way you can use it is by by basically kind of screwing the whole art community over when you're supporting this thing i'm not putting it into words properly but it's like you know if you realize the ethics of the whole thing it's harder to use it for yourself, you know, to, yeah. like just on a, for, at least for me on a personal note, it's like, yeah. you know, you feel kind of like you're selling out the whole art community by supporting it. <clears throat> it's kind of, yeah, I mean, and, and it's like, I'd rather have the tool available to use and, you know, and not be, not have to play a part of that, you know? Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I, I think that, I think that most people will go that way as knowledge about this stuff. Right comes out. I, I think a lot of people, so the people who are going to comment on Twitter and YouTube and stuff like that, we all, we all know they're, they're a self-selecting set, right? That's just, they're, and they're not, they're not representative of actual of everybody who's actually listening. To right. Stuff, right. Right. Like it's um that once you've been around on the internet for long enough, you realize that. So the, a lot of the, if you just focus on that, it seems that a lot of people are like, no, once it's out there and it looks this right. good, no one's ever going to stop. No right, one's ever going right. to hold back. Like, no, that's you. That's you, dog. Like, it's <laughs> <laughs> people like you are not going to hold back, but people do have nuanced viewpoints. And a lot of people will mm-hmm. just kind of resist, you know, if, if, they're, if they feel uncomfortable about it, if they have the means to do otherwise, it will affect the way that people interact with these things. And um, I... I think that a lot of people are are sort of discounting how significant that effect can be. You know, I mean, I'm I'm as morbidly fascinated about these things, but as soon as I knew about all this stuff, I was like, man, fuck, fuck that. I'm not. Yeah, right. like, I, don't, I don't I don't need I don't need any any part of that. Yeah. That said, I don't have any problem with any particular end users, right? Like I I I really mean it when I say it's a systemic issue to me. Yeah. And it's like I I'm. What, what am I going to accomplish by turning one person off from using this crap? Right. It's like nothing. Right. Like no, you, there's nothing to be yeah, accomplished yeah, there. Yeah. I, I want to I wanna see it get hashed out for real. Yeah, you know, I want yeah. the real In a meaningful ground way. floor. Yes, that, that's that's what I want. And I think that that's highly realistic. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm personally optimistic about it. And like I said, people really care. And pe- pe- people are, are paying a lot of attention. So I have no doubt in my mind that something um is going to happen but yeah i have no problems with particular end users i mean we live in the world it's like something is out there there's incentives Mm -hmm. to use it 
people are going to use it. I mean, I, I, I am fans of some of these people. I've seen some really cool, some of the, some of the AI art to me is just totally inspiring. I mean, that's why I've had, mm -hmm. I had a, 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 not an artist named Dehiscence on, and she does really cool, really cool, really weird, just bizarre, dark stuff that I love. There's a lot of people doing really cool work and they really love it. You know, they really mm -hmm. love the process and this should be worked out for them as well. You know, I mean, it should be worked out for yeah. everybody, mainly all the whole art community. But, you know, I want I want to I want them to be able to continue to create using their preferred tool. And uh, it, it's like the, But and, you know, this needs to happen. This needs to happen for this whole thing to yeah. continue. It just it can't keep going like this. Yeah, we, we need to get clear on all of these things right. yeah like you said for for the ai users too it is troubling in fact just um they released mid journey version four recently and um there was some stuff that that went around you know there was stuff getting passed around of people ai users who i you know i, I don't know them personally but they're they're you know they're the people who are in a mid journey discord or facebook group they're pretty invested being very upset to discover that mid journey was regurgitating the famous photo afghan girl verbatim. right yeah, i or, saw that or it, they they were they were upset they were like because and and i think they're upset for good reason it's like you just happen to recognize that one right because right? yeah. right. that one's famous <laughs> yeah so it makes you worry like shit well how do i know the next result that i get that i'm like damn that one's good right do I just not know that photo? Yeah, like what, right. What if it is verbatim another thing, and you just you have no idea. You know, you just haven't caught that one. It's yeah. The the problems with memorization and over overfitting in the models are something that we need to get very transparent on. They're extremely complicated questions. They're also they also unfortunately dovetail with um borderline philosophical questions or mm -hmm. things like that like let's say um well i guess we could just use afghan girl as the example um let, let me make sure that the that is the name of the photograph just so yeah i just saw that the other day it was crazy yeah it's called afghan girl okay. it's by um by sharbat gula um the it, it raises questions like you know when you see the verbatim regurgitations of the photo that it is the photo, right? And it's yeah. You certainly, I, I, I doubt that you could resell the Afghan girl photo if you repainted one fold on the cloth, cloth, right? right? Like I, everybody would agree, like that's not enough, but like that's that's still the photo. <laughs> so um, it's very clear, but it begs questions because to, I'm very interested in being as intellectually honest about these things as possible, right? Unfortunately, I'm not an expert, but as I understand it, um, Afghan girl is not inside the model. It's in the data set, right? But the model that you download is not the 5 billion images, right? It's trained. It's the it's an architecture uh, developed yeah, right. by ingesting all of the training data, right? Yeah. So it asks a philosophical question like, okay, it recreated that photo exactly but it's not the photo it's exactly it right but it remade it but let's 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 take it to the ad absurdum it remade it pixel and remade it perfectly yeah. pixel to pixel is it the same photo right or did it or did it <laughs> recreate it and that sort of pushes it off into this territory where right. it's okay things like that and again those things are interesting and as a as someone who likes to sit around and drink coffee and muse i have I, you know i'm interested <laughs> in those thoughts it's just like they're they're very difficult mm -hmm. questions to answer that are part technical part philosophical and like i've said they're muddying the waters people are getting really caught up right. on those arguments right. and I don't actually think they're not, yeah, that's they're, where the argument needs yeah, to happen. There's not, they're not right the big now. arguments. They're not the big, they're not the big problems. Yeah, indeed. But for an AI user, yeah, it's troubling to see that it will occasionally overfit 
and give you something exact. Well, well how and, can, and, you know, you know so illustrators also talk about, you know, uh, being afraid that uh, they'll lose their jobs because a company could just have some AI person cranking out mm -hmm. imagery. But how can yeah. a company feel comfortable using AI imagery if, if, if they can be accidentally violating copyright law? No big corporation I, I, is going to want to do that or want to risk no, that, you know? I don't think so. I don't think so. I, so, I think um, I've already heard stories of companies just right off the bat being like, nope, not till more data comes out. Like just interesting. we're not, so, so, so we're the, not doing that. So the, so the momentum overall seems to be towards pushing these companies to do the right thing. Uh, not do not that they'll, they'll ever do the right thing, but to do the thing that everyone agrees is the ethical thing to do. And uh you know. Well, I think, yeah, and and per perhaps for different reasons, right, you know, it might right, be right. That, that it might be that companies are less concerned about the ethics, but they're pushing the right, same way because right. they're like, we don't want to get yeah. sued. We don't care right? about because the we don't care about the reasons. We just want the results. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we might, you know, they they might have different reactions right. than we, the populace, you know, based on certain outcomes of whatever might happen with litigation or legislation or things like that. But um, I think I think what everyone's reacting to is that it's not quite clear what's going on here mm -hmm. and that it is fraught with problems and that things need to be worked out. I mean, especially really big companies, they, they're they very concerned with doing things legally. They don't want to waste right. time getting sued, you know? And Absolutely. I, the, com the companies that I've worked at were pretty serious, you know? Like when I worked in theme parks, every every image that I shipped that had photographic elements. So something I didn't draw completely by hand, but that was photo bash or something like that. Mm -hmm. I had to clear every single photo I use with the legal department, not wow. my art director, the lawyers. Wow. Yeah. They had to clear it. So they were, and that company wasn't gigantic. It wasn't Marvel wow. or something like that. Wow. Companies really care hmm. about that stuff. And I think that a lot of people don't get that because they've never worked the job, you know, they, right. they just assume companies don't give a shit. And mm -hmm. it's like, no, they do. You've just never worked at one of these companies. Right. They're actually quite concerned yeah, about these things. Yeah. And uh, they're going to have a reaction once this information yeah, percolates yeah, up to them. They yeah. are going to be worried about it. Yeah. yeah, that's great. That's good. I mean, well, I, I feel like, you know, having this conversation with you has given me a, a lot more, made me a lot more hopeful about the future yeah. of AI. I'm you glad. Because, you know, I didn't feel that way after watching the video. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, to, well let, let me be frank. Like, when when I put that when I put that video out, I didn't feel super hopeful either. I know, you know right? I, That's the thing. It's it's ha it's. I, I knew that was going to happen. Like that, so much had changed since since the vid since you put the video out. Even like yeah. you know you know you have more info now that that yes. So that's uh, yeah interesting. So it might be worth doing yeah. an, like an updated video too, or a little addendum or something. For that, sure, I will. I once once um once more once there's a bit more of a ground shift and. Uh, a substantial, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to do it when what I have right now, like the deviant art stuff is just like, it's going to change. Yeah, you know? right. I'm, yeah, I'm happy yeah. to talk. I'm happy to talk about that stuff on stream, which is just like live and mm -hmm. extemporaneous. That's fine. But um, if I'm going to commit it, uh, I want to work with some material that's robust, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, but I, I do want to put out there that, yeah, I, I was in a darker place when I put that video out, but the optimism here is that as I learned more, I only became more and more optimistic. Right. As I as I got more info from people, like, did you know this? Did you know that? Um, like about what the companies say and what they do. As I learned more, I only became more and more optimistic. That just like, damn, you really can't do this. And then, right. <laughs> and, and then as I and then people reached out to me, right? And I can't. I'm not in a position right now to to talk about you know, who these people right. are and stuff like that. And yeah. so everyone who, you know, it's always a good idea to discount anecdotal evidence, but I, ju I just want to put out there for the people who don't think I'm a lying bastard, um, <laughs> that the, the experts who reached out to me afterwards, machine learning people, uh, legal experts, things like that, just people that I've been able to talk to other artists and things like that. It really changed my overall vibe to talk to real experts 
and have them be like, oh, you can't do that. Oh no, they shouldn't be doing like right, it's, it's right, different right. when you as an artist are sort of like, <laughs> ooh, it feels wrong. And then when you talk to a professional yeah. in those specific fields and they're like, there is smoke here, right? There, there you're not seeing smoke where there's no fire. You're seeing smoke and there is a fire and it is a problem. Right. And there are things that need to be sussed out. As as I had more and more moments like that, ah oh man, I feel so much more optimistic now. Good, you know, I, I really, I really feel so much better, I have to say. And um, I don't know what's gonna happen, right? No, no one no yeah, one knows yeah. what's gonna happen, especially since I do personally really feel this needs to get worked out in court, mm -hmm. like I said. You know, it needs to be legislated as well. You know, and we need to talk about laws for it. And we all know once something goes into court or once something is, you know, being talked about in Congress you can't be sure what way it's going to go. Right. There's lots of stuff that we're like, they would never do yeah. that. And then it goes the other way. So yep. I'm not a crazy person. I know that if it goes there, that's going to be a time to be like, oh shit, like what's going to happen? Right, right. right. But um, even though I don't know, it's done a lot for me to see that it's not, it's not as obvious as the other side wants to claim it is, right. you know, they're just like, ah, you're fucked. Like, don't know. Right, there's nothing right. there. It's like, as you learn more, it's like, oh my God, it's, there is such an argument. Yeah, yeah exactly. Here. <laughs> there is such an argument to be had here that, um, that alone is very, it takes a load off. It makes me feel much better. And like I said, um, I don't know what's going to happen. No one can say they know what's going to happen, but I personally feel very optimistic based on everything that I've learned. I personally feel very optimistic. That's great. Well, I do too now, now that I've talked to you about it. Uh, Good. That's what I want. I'm, I'm very happy to produce that effect for sure. That's a, it's, it's, I mean, I feel smarter just having talked to you for, for this, two, I don't know, hour and a half, two hours, but um, yeah, you're really, really great at it. <laughs> really, oh, th thanks, really man. knowledgeable. If, and uh, If you feel smart talking to me, please go talk to the, go check out the actually smart people. So I'd, I'd advise anyone to go check out, um, go to GitHub copilot litigation.com. If you're interested in like the, the deep dive mm -hmm. into the cutting edge of this, as they say in the explanation, uh, as far as they know, as far as the lawyers know, it's the first class action of this sort right. that is dealing with these machine learning and data acquisition issues. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be up on the cutting edge, I'd highly recommend reading the class action complaint. It's written in understandable language. Oh, good. At this point, it's not legalese. Um, I read it and I didn't have a hard time really. Um, it's 53 pages of goodness. It's double spaced. <laughs> so it's, it's, not, it's not all that long. I, re I read it in like an hour and a half one morning, but I felt like I learned so much. And like I mentioned, the, the analogies are really interesting to learn there about the overfitting stuff and things like that. So... I'd recommend anyone who's very interested in this stuff to to read that. Um, I'd also like to point people to Carlo Ortiz as well, mm -hmm. who's uh, very knowledgeable about these things. Yeah, and, and an amazing artist as well. Yeah, she's awesome. And she's the best, and she's very experienced in organizing as well. So she's she's taking this super serious, and she's she's asking the right people the mm -hmm. right questions, and her. She just, I'd recommend anybody to follow her on Twitter if you want news about what she finds. And I think that she's yeah. a good person to watch if you want to be up on what the heck we can do, because she's also associated with the Concept Art Association, which for me right now, um, there might be other people, you know, sort of bubbling up, but CAA, the Concept Art Association right now, is the most focused, mm. forward thinking on these topics uh, Carla and the CAA just did a, a town hall recently where they got two reps from the U.S. Copyright Office. Oh wow, in, excellent! Yeah, to discuss these things, so they're they're taking this very seriously. Oh, so, good, cool. Uh, yeah, good. definitely watch out for them too. They have a YouTube channel. Okay. If you search Concept Art Association, their yeah, YouTube I'll, channel. I'll 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 try and find all this stuff and link it too. Yeah, please do. Yeah. Please do. Um, but they're they're. De Things like that are definitely the thing to watch and um, they can provide great educations on these points. I mean, if, uh, yeah, if you felt edified by what I said here, you know, so much of this is I'm getting it from CAA, from Carla, from people who are putting this information out there. So um, it's all very, very good stuff. I'd encourage anyone who's interested to look deeper Excellent. into those avenues. Well, 
cool, man. Thank you so much for talking about this. I, I think this is such a um, my pleasure. Yeah, such a great thing that you're doing. Uh, just talking I appreciate about the this. opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, you've got a sale coming up. I saw that on your live stream. You should promote oh, your sale. What? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I, 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 hey, we gotta eat. Uh, we gotta eat. Man. I forget you're supposed to promote on these things. I'm so concerned about the the machines. I'm just like, for the love of God, go read the litigation. It's like, just for the record, if you if you have a minute, I'd prefer you go read the GitHub Copilot litigation than go to my my course website. I'm fine. I'm fine. Please please focus on the robots. Um, I have a I do have a drawing course out. Um. It's uh, I'm unbelievably proud of it. I worked super hard on it. I I did nothing but it for about six months in wow. order to produce it. Um, it, I I love the work that's coming out of it. People are doing excellent um, assignments, and I mean, people are learning so much. And, and I'm very proud of the students. You can check it out at formfromimagination.com. That's just www.formfromimagination.com. The curriculum is on there, so you can get a preview of what you actually go through when you do the course. Um, I, I do feedback on everything in the course right now. It's a it's a feedback focused course. Uh, it's a lot of work. I give notes on on every assignment oh, wow. that everybody does. That's amazing. Um, but um, it I, it is going on sale at the end of this month. Let me look at my. Uh, it, it's going on sale from the twenty first to the twenty eighth. It'll be a hundred dollars off. Um, Excellent. it's ongoing, it's ongoing access. It's just, you buy it, you've got it. Anything that I update to it, you get that too. That's great. Just, it looks amazing. It, I was checking the website out. It looks really Thank thorough. So Thank yeah, you. yeah uh, Steven tried to make it thorough. <laughs> yeah. Steven's an amazing artist. You can tell he's a super smart guy. So anyone who, anyone who wants to learn Thank drawing you, or art, or, you know, getting better, even if you already know, I'm sure this would be a huge, uh, uh, learning experience for you so i'm going to recommend it having not even seen it because i trust you <laughs> just Thanks, from the buddy. website I, I recommend it i know it's good i just know it's good um yeah well all, all humility aside it is good <laughs> yeah yeah i'm sure it is you i, I yeah. believe you i totally believe you um well thanks for coming on Thanks for coming on. Thank and um, thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was really incredible and really informative. And you just have to say goodbye to the audience and then don't hang up and I'll stop recording. So just sure. so you just have to say, say, say goodbye, audience. Goodbye, human audience. I'm sorry. Did I offend any robots out there? I hope not. <laughs>